We start with a little theory session about loops. We've just seen one use of loops, but I think they are a central, central tool in VL. And there are a few like things we we invented. What um, on how loops would work in a visual language? So, just to recap, what we will do: um, we'll input some random points, and then we will, depending on a threshold, like output start and end point of a line, and then we'll draw the line in. In VVV. So what we have to do, we have to run an algorithm that goes through every input point and checks it with every other input point. And then if it finds a shorter distance between them than a threshold, then it will like add those start and end points to some list that we would then will output. So and we will um, VL has, has two kinds of, of loops. So first of all, a loop is, is a construct that executes its content multiple times. And if each execution is called in one iteration of the, of the loop. And there's a for each loop that doesn't have a spread count, in, uh, uh, iteration count input, but it just takes any collection input, like a spread or a sequence or an, an array, every, everything that has a collection of values. And then it just runs for every slice or every element that is in the collection. Just um, so this, the, the count of iterations is defined by the input collection. And then the, how it works is you put the collection in into the loop, and in each iteration you get one element of the loop. And yeah, the for loop. Um, has this kind of same features, but with a fixed count. And now the, the interesting part is there are several ways how data can get into a loop. The first one is you just take a link from the outside to the inside of the loop, and then it will just be the same value for each iteration. And if you use the splicer, the, the little angular um, rectangle we used uh, in the example before, then it will when it's a, in, in, is an input, it will take the collection, give you one slice in the loop, and if you have an output, it generates one slice for each iteration, then you get the collection on the, on the output. And the third one is, is, a, is, is a concept that's not super easy to understand, but it makes total sense when you use it. And it's very important. Um, it's called accumulator. You start with an initial value, and for each iteration, you can define a new value that you will get in the next iteration. So it has this this um, this kind of data flow. It's it's like kind of a variable in in the loop that you can in each iteration write to it, and then you get it in the next iteration. And we will use this to to gather the the line segments. So we will input an empty spread, and each time we will find a line, we will add it to the accumulator, and then if we find one, we, we pass this spread to the next iteration, and maybe it finds a new one, so it will add a second one, and then in the end, after the last iteration, here, we will have all the accumulated line segments on, on the output. So this is an important part. So that they look like these little diamonds here, and here, those are the slices, we will input here the, po the collection of points, then we get one point. And the first one, just a link, we will input the threshold into the patch, which will be static, just the same for each iteration.